everyone here at UTD Student Media, we invite you to meet your candidates for this 2017 student government election. Would you guys like to introduce yourselves? Yeah, sure. My name is J.W. Vandershans. I'm a first semester senior. I'll be finishing off my undergrad, Bachelor of Science in International Political Economics in December, and continuing on to my Master of Public Policy. Uh, I'm running to be your president for student government. My name is Alex Holcomb. Uh, I'm a junior economics major, and I'm running to be your vice president for student government. All right, so let's get started. Uh, start with an easy one. Why are you guys motivated to run for student government? Yeah, so I think my motivation spurs from two separate things. First, off of my past experience with student government and seeing the different inefficiencies that you have, uh, I joined in as a sophomore. I uh, wasn't really too involved freshman year, kind of wanted to make a difference, and saw the different ways that we were doing great things with student government and also all of these different inefficiencies going on in the organization. So I wanted to get to the top position to make sure that these inefficiencies are kind of flushed out. Uh, the second main reason is, of course, you know, the dedication to making uh, not only student government, but the rest of the university uh, better off than it has been. As you guys both know, we're now a tier one university and we're really making that transition as more people come in with different perspectives. And I want to make sure that a person is at you know, the head of the ship, the captain of the whole program, to really make sure that those opinions are translated into actual actions instead of them falling to the wayside like they have been in the past few years. Sure. Alex? Uh, well, I guess what motivated me to run for student government uh, vice president was probably a combination of two things. Uh, one. Um, I really, really love this school, like, m more than, like, anybody I, I feel like should. <laughs> um, and, it, you know, a lot of what I'm trying to get done this semester is just making sure that the rest of the students feel the same love that I do for the school. You know, making sure that people are invested in the community, making sure that they're involved with extracurriculars. I think that that's something that um, student government as a whole has been criticized on in the last semesters. And I, I really think we can do a lot trying to get people more involved. Um, and then my second point was actually your, f your first point. Um, I think that there's a lot of inefficiencies with the way that student government's been run in the past, and I really, really look forward to the opportunity of uh, making sure that all of those are, are, are flushed out and, and making sure that we're running as efficiently as the rest of the orgs on campus. All right, so if we're talking about the basics of your campaign, uh, let's describe the platform. So y'all are on the comment unity ticket? Yes. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Well, we, first off, we were trying to f figure out an idea that really ca encapsulated what we were trying to do as a ticket because we have a lot of different involvement, uh, not just with you know orientation leaders, like you used to be an orientation leader, uh, team leaders, Greek life organizations, international students, cultural organizations, trying to figure out how to get that into a title. Uh, because last year there were tickets like Progress and you know United is One that had like UNT UTD written into mm -hmm. it. Uh, so we were trying to figure out you know what to really do. And so one of our ticket members was like, what about community and how we're going to change that into Comet Unity, right? To kind of get Comet into there in, in somewhat of a pun, right? <laughs> I just right? Got that. Yeah, exactly. So for everyone, you know, yeah. now, now you know exactly like the there, little yeah. the new little nuance of it. I like your, your logo. If you look sideways, it's a C, but if you look at it head on, it's a U. So it's like Comet Unity. So yeah, we had a we had a person that's pretty pretty good with you know digital design mm -hmm. on the ticket as well, which is just another asset we have mm -hmm. um, that yeah. put that together. But yeah. the platform. But the platform yeah. itself, yeah. So the whole idea of common unity is that we're trying to unify the student body moving forward. A few things on the platform, tech advancements. I had the opportunity to give a tour to the chief information officers candidates that are basically going to be heading off OIT until, of course, you know, the, the federal uh, hiring freeze happened, um, and talk to both of them about different ideas of not only improving technology on campus, but getting students to be a part of that process. So right now, a few students do work with the administration to get certain technology out there, but a lot of students I know, you know, personally have good CS backgrounds, have good programming backgrounds that could really be an asset to the university that the university isn't really using. So that's, you know, one of the platform things that we're trying to move forward with is getting this tech advancement, but also have student involvement in that tech advancement. Uh, another big thing is accessibility, which is a very broad umbrella in how we're interpreting it, because it's not only for people that have physical and mental disabilities to make sure that they're having the same opportunity on the university that anybody else does, but it's also just access to emergency services. So, you know, the blue poles around campus, uh, we had someone that's uh, really good at kind of mapping out how different resources are used, Addison Larson, and she basically has been working with the current student government to see the, the blind spots that the polls have to make sure that everybody has access to those when they need them. I think they've been used 57 times in the past few years, the most recent number, so making sure that that resource is 
you know, accessible is another way we're going about it. There are a few other things like we've talked about in the reason why we were running that we need to get SG on another level entirely to get it to where all these other organizations are and to also reach out to that group. And we have a few other small things like reforming food, uh, reforming the way at which like feedback is given to different organizations. But it's a lot about involving students in our organization and involving students in other organizations, all coming together as a student body to push the campus forward, which as a community, you know, Comet Unity, that's what we're trying to do. So that's kind of the, the crux of why Comet Unity is a name, the ticket, the idea, because we have a lot of passionate senators that want that same idea moving forward. So it's like moving the university together with senators as well as with the larger student body as a whole. Yeah, because at the end of the day, the senators are representative, but that doesn't mean they're the only students that can do anything. Mm -hmm. I think that the driving force that UTD has is the passionate students, and if we can facilitate that and use rep representatives at, as a catalyst for that process to advance, we're going to make the university, you know, like a tier zero. I don't know, like the, the <laughs> next level. Negative right. one. Yeah, yeah, negative <laughs> one going from there. Alex, anything to add? Yeah, so I guess w with what is with what our uh, platform is has outlined I guess what I'm really excited about is exactly why I said that I was running mm -hmm. um, I'm really really excited about making sure that we have the opportunity to have uh, better communication with all of the like the presidents and the heads of organizations around campus making sure that that information is more centralized and you know making sure that that we have good communication um, and then also making sure that uh, students are just in general, if they feel involved in the process, they'll be more likely to be involved uh, going forward. Um, you know, if we, if we open up uh, our communications um, chair to making sure that, you know, pe more students are giving input on what they'd like to see happening on campus, hopefully we'll see uh, an increase in their participation in the events that we do hold. Um, you know, I think that those kind of get at the basis of the main um, the main arguments against student government at this point, and I think that if we, if we can fix those, then it'll, it'll be a really great semester, or a great year. Can you both kind of talk about uh, your involvement with SG and, you know, how long you've been a part of it and how you're going to use that experience that you've had in SG to move all these projects that you outlined forward? Um, because they are very detailed and specific and there's a lot of bureaucracy involved as well. So could you kind of speak to your experience with SG and then projects you've worked on in the past that kind of show that you're able to move these projects that you just talked about forward. Yeah, sure. So I've been in student government since my sophomore year, so going on full two years now. Ever since halfway through my first term, I was on the executive council of secretary, now I'm treasurer. So for the vast majority of the time I've been in student government, I've been part of an executive council. And the reason that that's important is because I understand the specifics of those meetings and how projects really get pushed forward. We have a lot more informal discussions within those meetings, but they're a lot more detailed and there are a lot of, hey, who can I talk to about this? Or, hey, I've talked to this person. How can we move forward in this way? So I understand the bureaucracy and I understand the actual way and process about going uh, forward with projects. Uh, also, secretary and treasurer don't necessarily have committees. Committees They have a similar function in Senate meetings and more importantly in committee meetings where a lot of the planning within uh, the different project groups actually happens. They have a similar function with president and vice president in that we're an administrative oversight. So we go to all the different committees and we look at the different projects and how we can help and kind of refresh ourselves. Because secretary is more of um, like administrative organization and then treasurer is a lot of budgeting things. So it's not one particular project that I've worked on in the past, but it's kind of been overseeing and adding important dialogue into different projects for different committees. And the reason that that's such an important quality is because I understand all the different parts of the process in getting something done. Additionally, I have good personal connections with not only the president and vice president now, who I knew closely, actually the uh, president right now, Aksha, went to my high school. Uh, she was like in between grades, me and my brother. So personal connection with them, but also really close friends with the last president and the last vice president and the pre vice president before that. So on top of a personal connection, I also have like the professional knowledge of how to get things done. So moving forward, the projects can be done as efficiently as possible, which is a huge theme of efficiency and communication that we're trying to push forward continuously. Alex, did you want to add anything or about your experience in SG? Yeah, so uh, I would say that my experience isn't so broad. I haven't been a, a part of SG for as long. Uh, but with the last year that I have been involved, I was a senator on the Legislative Affairs Committee. Um, we, we, we worked on uh, anything from the resolution that we wrote for Senate Bill 6 all the way down to, you know, uh, like the voter drives that we ran and we actually, we were able to 
turn out, you know, some of the largest numbers that we've ever seen. Uh, like hundreds of students were registered to vote and they were able to vote in this last election. Um, I guess when, whenever it comes down to why I think that that'll help me in my term um, as vice president, um, you know, I, the, there's a, a certain, I guess, way that you need to approach students uh, whenever you're trying to get them involved uh, in anything from like, we, we ran Rock the Vote, um, uh, and again, those those voter drives were were during Rock Rock the Vote. It, it was a really really successful, um, a really really success successful um, event that we ran with Rock, with Rock the Vote. And I think that get, you know getting those uh, students out to that just shows that you know we, we can get um, people behind our our events, and hopefully we can carry that over into this next year. Mm -hmm. So kind of going off of that, uh, what about the what about student governments functioning? Would you change? You, you mentioned a lot of steps to get projects done, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of um, you know um, intricacies involved. So I guess what's working now, and how could you make it smoother and um, make the communication more efficient and get all the committees more up to date with each other's projects and you in the loop and things like that? Or specifically, what's not working? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fix. yeah. So Alex and I talked to a lot of people getting them on the ticket and kind of propose this idea of communication is the most effective solution, but it's also the core of a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. And I think that the in uh, inefficiency with communication comes down to how quickly projects are being communicated with the president and vice president. So I think that the best way to go about uh, resolving the problem that we see, which is communication or the lack thereof, is simply to you know require more communication channels to be used. For instance, and not to get like too technical or too plain, my idea is to use like a simple Google Drive that people have for committee reports to be immediately updated and also to have like an active agenda being adjusted before meetings so that we can just print them out instead of a rush that I see because I'm behind the scenes on a lot of these, these different things where committee reports are being sent in either really late, allocations are being sent in at weird times instead of a week before. Uh, so the whole theme is going to be making sure that it's not rigid, but more organized and also much easier to communicate instead of emailing things in and then having to reply back and having all these different, you know, small steps that really add up to like spreading the amount of time that things actually get done like a lot more than they need to be um, all the way down to something simple. Because at the end of the day, I want to talk to a senator or talk to a person about what they're doing. And I want that conversation not to be like, what are you doing? But like, hey, how has this improved? Because I want to be on top of that. Uh, not to, you know, say that Oxstone and Joey are doing a bad job, uh, but I'm saying that the communication channel definitely has these needed improvements that I see happening down the road. So underneath the communications umbrella, would that also include getting things like the budget and the minutes for the meeting out in public in a more timely fashion than they are currently being published? Yeah, published? I think so. Yeah, and, and as treasurer, I know that the, you know, just communication with, with the mercury of sending out the budget and sending out the minutes has been slow. Uh, and I think that that's a lot of because there are so many steps that people are taking. Uh, and it's not steps that people are taking because they're lazy. It's steps that they're taking because that's how the process is now. So on a fundamental level, changing that is going to not only speed up communication within student government, but it's going to speed up communication with other organizations, which is an even bigger focus that Alex and I have. Because like he said earlier, getting those students involved and showing that they're involved is just going to incentivize them to participate more in student government, which is just like a cyclical thing that's going to benefit the university overall. Anything to add? Yes. Yeah. Um, I think that a lot of the problems that lie with student government right now is if you walked in and you were to ask any one of those senators, um, I guess from like life to death um, of, of a proposal, how do you walk, like how would you walk, walk through that? And I'm not 100% sure that and that 100 percent of those senators would be able to tell you that um, just how to make a proposal. how to make a proposal um, and that's not to say that they're not doing anything there's plenty of other places to contribute but I think that whenever you bottleneck your performance by having certain senators who know how to do um, I guess only one thing or you know a certain other group of senators that only knows how to do a couple of things like that's just that's just not good organizational skills. Making sure that everybody is on the same page, they start out, they know the, the responsibilities of, of their position, they know how to effectively do it. Like, making sure that all of those check marks are done um, hasn't been done in the past and has just been kind of like overlooked. I, I think that if we took a step back and we, and we actually got down in, into the, the responsibilities of a senator and how to do the job, I think we could do uh, phenomenally more, uh, just more over the time of our, our, our year term. 
I guess uh, going off of inefficiencies in student government or perceived inefficiencies, I wanted to ask a bit about the budget, which I know would be your sure. specific focus. So I know that the budget can come across as looking different than the actual picture, right, based on other resources that SG can reach out to without putting it on that line item sure. budget. Um, however, there are certain things like that would appear confusing, like only about a third of the money so far has been allocated, and it's a large resource mm -hmm. that's allocated to you guys. <coughs> other things like 30% of the allocated funds going to the SG retreat. So um, I was just curious, I guess, a little bit about if you can clear up some things about how the budget's working, and if you think it needs to be allocated more efficiently, how would you change it? Um, so I don't think that the allocations themselves have too much inefficiency. It's just that the quantity of allocations, uh, I think that right now we have a lot of larger projects. So like Rock the Vote, for instance, or Homecoming Assistance and whatever else um, have taken a larger portion of the budget. Um, in terms of the 30% going to the retreat, I think that's an inaccurate calculation. But at the end of the day, I think that smaller allocations can serve a different function. I don't think that the allocations themselves and how we're using the money is problematic right now, aside from us just not using enough of it. And that comes from a lot of projects being slowed down from communication with the administration or a lot of people working on one project instead of one person working on it and other people working on other things. Sometimes the project does you know, necessitate that more than one senator in a committee or in multiple committees is working on something. So like a larger thing like um, projects that we've done with like sexual assault awareness, video, um, things of that nature require more people to work on the projects. But at the end of the day, I think that the, you know, the biggest problem with the budget would be not using enough. It's not necessarily how we're using it now. It's just that we haven't used, you know, like you said, we've only used a third of it and we're almost done with the entire academic year, which is when the budget So ends. do you think next year with your streamlining of the communications, we'll see more of the budget allocated? Yeah, and I think at the end of the day, it ends up being communication with students. So student government only has, you know, so few individuals that have project ideas. We have, you know, say 40 people that each have their own project idea when we could easily have 80 other projects from students that are then sent to the representatives. Another huge thing in my mind is that we don't have enough student involvement in the projects or student suggestions in the projects. It's a lot of student senators, you know, we're students too, us having an opinion of, hey, what would we do to fix this? And at the end of the day, the things that we do, a lot of people still enjoy and appreciate just because, you know, we're coming at it from a student perspective and not an administrative perspective, but we still don't have the outside student coming in. We've had suggestions every now and then, but if we had continuous suggestions, then we would never have to think of anything. <laughs> it would just be us representing the students directly, which is exactly what the function of student government is or what we perceive it to be. How do you plan on getting to know the needs of the student body? Like you said, how do you plan on, you know, channeling those ideas towards your office and I guess, um, do you worry about your ability to represent the student body? So I don't worry in, in any way of representing the student body. I think that Alex and I can represent the student body very well, but luckily we're not the only ones to do it. I think the ticket that we formed and other individuals that will join student government after appointment are going to have a ton of diversity, a ton of different ideas, and moving forward are going to be able to really assist the students. Um, at the end of the day, I think that major improvements with communication can come from what we've done in the past. So there was a president's brunch that turned into like kind of a lunch situation that happened uh, a, a month or two ago. And I think that's a good important first step that we invited out these presidents, hey, come talk to us, come vent your concerns. Other organizations. Yeah, other organizations. Yeah, to, to represent the organizations, mm -hmm. um, to vent their concerns. And I want to make that a regular thing. I also want to make office hours a very regular thing for all the presence, all the organizations to know that they can come at these particular times and talk to us. Um, I don't think it's an inefficiency on Aux this part, but I definitely think that it's something that we can expand on in really showing, hey, like, we're sitting here waiting for you to come to us. I mean, we're doing other things sitting here, not just like twiddling our thumbs, but we really want to do things that you guys want as students instead of w what we think would be best. And I think that's a good change that we need to have. Um, I guess, have you guys thought about also going out to their events? Like, I know yeah. you said opening up your office hours and having mm -hmm. them come to you, but you could also be attending, you know, big events that other organizations host. Have you guys yeah, thought about Yeah, I definitely think that's important. I think that clarifying in cer certain office hours, hey, you know, two, of the, two hours of these office hours today, I'm going to be at X organization mm -hmm. or Y organization. And I think that the outreach is really important. I think it's a two-way street. 
uh, that student government shouldn't be the only one and organization shouldn't be the only one. They need to meet in happy mediums or meet on both sides every now and then so that the exchanges happen. Because I just don't think communication channels are opening themselves up enough right now. Right, and relating directly to that, something that comes immediately to mind when you're saying uh, we want to foster suggestions, you know, we want to represent the people, which I think is great. Um, but if you look at things like our voter turnout, um, you would just say UTD participation in anything related to SG is, or anything on campus is kind of abysmal. Um, with last year's SG election turnout being about 7% of the population. Mm -hmm. So I guess I would see your biggest challenge as getting people to have suggestions and reach out to you. So how do you guys plan on like fostering that engagement? Um, I, whenever we, whenever we were cho choosing the synergies that we were, that were running on our ticket, uh, we were doing it very deliberately, making sure that there was a wide you know, di diversity of not, not just uh, the backgrounds of where they're coming from, but like the, the organizations that they're in, the voices that they would, that they would have, the opinions that, that would be shared or not shared. Um, you know, having that diverse intersectionality is, is really, really important. And um, I think that the issue lies with where we don't have it represented in SG, right? And the way that you get that is uh, having more projects on campus that would, that would um, I guess, have students investing in the community around them. So one way to get students to be invested in, I guess, or w one way that you could get students to care who's, who represents them is to have a benefit in that representation. And right now, you haven't really seen that. Like students, if you, if you were to go around and ask, like, hey, what has student government done? Um, I'm not sure if a lot of students would be able to tell you what student government does. We do a lot, but they just don't really know about it. And you know, making sure that they're invested in the, in the um, in the projects that we bring on to campus would really, I guess, change the perception of the way that student government affects every single uh, student on this campus, because it does. It's just not apparent right now. Speaking about student government and the election process, um, in the months leading up to the elections, uh, there were several candidates who had expressed an interest in running for the president VP positions. And um, now, you know, with almost two days left to vote, um, you guys are running unopposed. So I guess in, in that time frame, what kind of happened? And is this typical for student government where um, you have a lot of interest at the beginning and then candidates start to drop off as we get closer to voting and the election you know, is more charged? And um, if the, is this a problem? And if so, why do you think that? Well, I don't necessarily think that it's an issue um, because you know we know the individuals that we're going to run because at least how the current election rules are, and I'm sure you're aware that you have to be in student government for a semester if you're going to run for president or vice president. So we know all the people that we're going to run personally. And if you knew the personal reasons that they have for backing down, you would know that it's not a concern. Um, I think one person had a work obligation that at the end of the day, we go to college to get an education and to have greater opportunities in the future, especially in a workplace. And that person's taking that other uh, opportunity. Another person that was going to run for a position um, had a huge religious conflict, very personal to him. I don't want to go into a lot of detail um, but that was basically the reason that he had stepped down so it's not a concern of people having interest and then losing that interest it's that they have interest and that other things in their life come up and like we said we're students you know we're not elected officials that are being paid like a huge amount of money this is our sole purpose right we're also here to get an education and at the end of the day if there are other things that come up that are really conflicting you know you don't want a representative that has those conflicts especially if they don't feel personally that they can do it because of these conflicts or if they see it as a different opportunity like the work opportunity like I said you know at the end of the day like getting jobs a pretty important thing and, um, um, all that is totally understandable I just it kind of makes me think mm -hmm. um, whether we would see more voter turnout if we had more consistent contested elections oh I agree completely Alex and I have talked about this a lot before if we had more contested <laughs> elections um, if we had more people running it would definitely foster more growth and more you know election participation I don't think we're gonna disagree on that in mm -hmm. in any you know time frame mm -hmm. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, this is the hand that we're dealt and we kind of want to make sure at this point that people are comfortable with seeing Alex and I as, you know, potential candidates. Is that something you would ever want to try to modify the Constitution to allow for more competition in the elections or do you, would you guys not really want to focus on that? We modified the Constitution mm -hmm. this, this past semester to, you know, redo the way that, that elections are, are ran. Um, and I guess, uh, l let me go back and, and say that I do think it's a problem with the way that the election did turn out. Um, and not, not because I think that we'll do a poor job or that like, <laughs> yeah, anything like that. But I think that whenever you don't have enough competition, 
um, even if it benefits me, I don't think it's a good thing whenever we don't get competition. Um, I think of SG as like a marketplace of ideas, and the more competition there is, the better ideas are going to be produced. And anything that I can do to um, promote more people running, like I, I have, like I really do want people to get out there and and you know put their put their voice out and then let people choose. Um, but unfortunately, that's just not not the way that it, the the chips fell this year. And I think that it's been a consistent, um, a cons basically, it's been very consistent over the past couple of, couple of uh, election cycles. That's just the way that it's turned out. And um, I personally am definitely going to be looking in, into anything that I can, and uh, anything that I can do to, um, I guess, change the way that it ends up next next election cycle. Yeah, and I mean, I've, oh, sorry, if you were going to ask oh, something no, else, forward. but um, I think that it takes being in the president and vice president position to really understand what reforms should be made. Uh, for instance, I know that uh, there was ex concern expressed by, it might have been AMP, it might have been uh, like your individual service, but it was that, you know, elections aren't open to anyone. Uh, so, that was AMP. yeah, it was AMP. <laughs> um, so I think that that concern, um, just in a personal opinion, would have to be addressed if we were in the position of president and vice president, because we'll de then understand like how much of our experience in student government in the past really helped us in this. If you know we could have done the job without being in student government at all, then Alex and I will most definitely look into opening that up to everyone. But I think that the dialogue, like this question uh, being answered, can't be answered like in its utmost, to, like the fullest extent, without us being in that position and having that experience. Uh, but like Alex said, we'll definitely look into like any possible changes that are going to foster competition. Because like he said, competition, marketplace of ideas is going to make for the best election. When we spoke to Akshita, your current president, uh, our current student body president, um, she mentioned that she, once she came into office, she actually didn't know who was on what ticket and the ticket system kind of dissolved and everyone just kind of came together to work on projects. So what is the point of the ticket system then um, if at the end of the day um, it kind of d disappears after everyone's been elected? Yeah, so I think that the purpose of the ticket system is just to have, you know, accountability within the group that you're going to run for. So if you know how like a traditional ticket is set up, any amount of people could run on a ticket, but there are only a certain amount of spots for each position. Like I think there are 12 spots for seniors, 10 spots for juniors, four for sophomores, and 17 for graduate students. So you would only, you know, theoretically want to have that amount in each position because then you'd be competing within the ticket, which wouldn't really be helpful. I think that the only function in my mind because I agree that there's really no other reason because you know no ticket is going to say hey we don't want to help the students it's like hey we do want to help the students and then discuss right mm -hmm. they're all at the end of the day going to collapse into let's do things that are going to help people right maybe we have different focuses but at the end of the day those focuses are just going to layer on top of each other um, I think that the only reason that it that tickets are a good idea still is to have accountability to know hey I know Alex and I personally know every single person on the ticket uh, we have confidence in every person because you know we handpicked those people to run alongside us and whether or not they're existing senators that want to continue on projects that they've had in the past or they're new people that we know have expressed not only interest in student government but certain projects that we you know would be fantastic to have within the student body uh, representation I think that the accountability at the end of the day is most important thing because it's going to foster like a guarantee that those things are going to happen but that, other than that, there isn't really too much of a purpose, even though accountability is a big thing. All right. I believe that's all the time we have today. Thank you guys so much for coming on and, and talking to us. us um, and we really appreciate it. And voting begins, uh, I believe, Wednesday. Wednesday, it opens up at 8 a.m. and it'll close Friday at 4 p.m. Awesome. All right.